Alright, y'all. I don't know what time it is. It's time to go deep. I hope y'all got y'all gear ready. Cause we don't demonstrate. Bitch, we penetrate. And uh, we got a whole going through the day. We're now rocking with the splash specialist and the dive instructor. Shout out to the Western Schwebel Room crew. Old Man Ali, Old Painless, Eddie P, and of course, we can't forget the man, Beat Down Brown. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, this is uh, Diving Deep Dialogues, and we about to do just that. What's going on, player? What we got cracking today? Well, it's percolating, Pimpin'. You know what it is. I oh, mean, shoot, percolating like morning coffee. Mm, just got mine in. <laughs> man, I feel you on that, but for show, sure. for show, sure. for well, show. Sure. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another deeper dives dialogue unlimited podcast. Yeah, boy. We are your hosts, and uh, you know, you spoke with the splash specialist. You heard from the splash specialist. I'm the dive instructor. And uh, you know, aka the Rain Man and uh, handsome, was it Mandel Mandel Tron? Mandel Tron, because they putting robots in the water now. You feel me, man? Listen, ah. they, they got all that word, they got all of that. You heard word me up. Check us out on rumble.com and youtube.com as well as yeah, boy. more platforms to come and many already in existence. I want to say we're on, are we on Spotify yet? We might not be on Spotify, but the Schwabel Room, the whole outfit, the whole brigade, you know what I'm saying? We all doing our thing. If we ain't there, we going to be there. Like, share, and subscribe so that way you don't miss us when we get there. Exactly. Yeah, I'm saying. Exactly. What we got today, man. Well, we 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 did the under the radar last week, so this week is uh, you know, I don't want to say our typical or usual, but we you know we're going to our deeper dive dialogue on the uh, domestic violence in the uh, sports world, um, taking a deeper deeper look into what the. Uh, sports brain injuries and the effects let's just say if we're going to rapper reference it and i mean this is just because of the same initials shout out to jeezy <laughs> cte baby yeah CT, not corporate thug entertainment but shout out to jeezy you know what i'm saying for sure we're talking about the cte that happens uh when you get hit too many times, the concussion madness, you feel me? Yes. And uh it's it's real. You know what yeah, I'm saying? it sure. definitely is real. It's not a game, people. We're gonna take I a little a little we're gonna take a little peek also into just the psychology of what it takes to be successful in sports in America and uh what is it, the social the social effects, right, of uh, hero worship, putting people on a pedestal. Um, not saying that they haven't earned some degree of respect in their uh, respective fields of uh, skill set and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, adept adeptness in their craft. However, sometimes we take it a bit too far. We give them a god complex or an untouchable uh, modality of movement, right? So and then we turn around and we want to punish them the harshest and not saying they don't deserve punishment, but I mean, that's it's something to look into as a society. What are we doing to our young men and women that we're, we're um, pushing out into the sports world, the entertainment world, so on and so forth, right? Word. So let's get into it. Man. Can I get a hit? 
Pit. Pit. Might have been the wrong analogy, but it fit. Just saying. So one of my favorite guys to watch on the turf and the grass, uh, Ohio Zone. <laughs> Joe Mixon, we're gonna start off talking talking a little bit about uh, situations that have arisen uh, in his career recently. Let's see here, I forgot yeah. to. So look. he's from Ohio. I want to say I believe he's from. Don't quote me right away, but I want to say the Cleveland area. Oh. We, we'll we'll get into that too. We'll we'll actually bring the, the audience along with us, so to speak, on that uh, knowledge journey. Let's see what, what window there we wait. No, that's us. Nope, nope, nope. Chrome tab. Yeah, we're going. Yeah. There we are. Can we see this? Yeah, I can see it. Cool. I might just full screen it if they'll let me. Oh, okay. Screw it. Here we go. After his 2014 misdemeanor charge for punching a woman in the face and a 2016 one-game suspension for intimidating a parking officer, a warrant was issued for Joe Mixon's arrest on one count of aggravated menacing in February 2023. The Cincinnati Bengals running back allegedly pointed a gun at a woman's face and told her, the police can't get me. Oh, but they did. Police issued a warrant for Mixon's arrest on February 2nd, 2023. 23. But then they reneged on it 24 hours later. The whole timeline's a bit sketchy, but let's see if we can make some sense of it. On January 21st, 2023, a 21-year-old woman claimed that Mixon had pointed a gun at her and threatened to pop off her face. I'm guessing that means something a lot more sinister than it sounds. Anyway, the woman filed a complaint against the Bengals running back, claiming he had told her the police wouldn't be able to do anything about it while waving a gun in her face. The police took up that bet. They issued a warrant for his arrest on one count of aggravated menacing. This was on a Thursday night. By Friday, the Hamilton Prosecution Department announced that they'd dismissed the charges against Mixon. WT in Cincinnati, the charges against Bengals running back Joe Mixon have been dismissed at the request of city prosecutor. Something that the athlete's agent, Peter Schaefer, had already predicted. Schaefer told news outlets that the charges against Mixon were bogus, that the police should act more responsibly since there was a life and reputation at stake here. Mixon was allegedly outraged at the possible misdemeanor charge. Reports suggest neither he nor his agent could make sense of the warrant. So we just gotta do whatever we gotta do to um, go in there to Ultimately, just like Schaefer had predicted, the charges were dropped a day later, followed by some choice words for the men and women in blue by Schaefer. The police should have acted more responsibly, sure, but you need to cut them some slack here, especially since Schaefer doesn't have a sparkling record to begin with. His agent claims that the police were rash in filing a warrant against Mixon without going through all of the evidence in the case. The word irresponsible was used, but when you take a look at the running back's track record, you might see side with the police on this one a lot of tackles Mixon inside the 20 and Mixon all the way down Near the 17 Back in 2014, a day after he had turned 18, Mixon was arrested after he punched a woman in the face. The then Oklahoma State football player had allegedly been Fair use, fair use. This is from YouTube. Uh we do not own the rights to this. This is from Knockout Sports. Shout out, Knockout Sports. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, as you can see, very quality video. Um, it will be called Knockout Sports. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like what we're doing right now, what we're talking about today. Um, wow. Did you see that right hook? Um, man. I ain't, say it ain't so, Joe, but... We already know what it is. Man. 
and harassing his classmate, Amelia Molitor, and her friends for a while. It started outside a store, and then Mixon and his friends followed Molitor and her friends inside the store. According to Amelia, the future running back called one of her friends a homophobic slur, which made her shove and slap Mixon. Yeah, and I could just sense, like, my dogs is ready, especially come last week. You just look around in the locker room and you just know. The then 18-year-old retaliated by punching Molitor in the face, which pushed her onto a glass table. She broke four bones in her face and needed surgery to repair the damage Mixon had caused. And what did the future running back do after he left Molitor bloodied, battered, and bruised? He brushed himself off, signaled to his friends, and very calmly left the store. Unsurprisingly, video footage of the 2014 incident is doing rounds all over the internet. Once again, nothing brings more attention to your past crimes than a fresh new one. Or in this case, even the prospect of you doing a crime can bring your personal life into high focus. Where was I, right? Mixon punching a woman in the face? So Molitor filed a police report and Mixon was subsequently arrested. This was during the time he'd been playing college football. Now, you know, as you look back on this game and you say, okay, where did the game Swing. Recruiters had their eye on him, but after his arrest, they started looking elsewhere. Mixon, well, his family members and agents really realized the gravity of the situation and entered a plea deal, which basically meant that the 18-year-old would serve no jail time, but would be put on probation for a year and sentenced to 100 hours. 2016, which was around the same time as the NFL draft. shouldn't have put his client on such a high pedestal, actually, because he was back to being problematic a few weeks later. In his apology to Amelia, Mixon claimed that the way he acted that night wasn't the way he'd been raised his whole life, in no uncertain terms, claiming that he'd acted out of character that night. I could have sworn he was trying to hold back from claiming that it wasn't him in the video. But all right, he apologized, and Amelia acknowledged it. He learned his lesson. Nope, because a few short weeks after the lawsuit, Oklahoma coach Bob Stoops decided to suspend him for one game. Previously, after the 2014 incident, the team suspended him for the remainder of the 2014 season. Now Stoops decided to do so again, but not because of Molitor's lawsuit. Just like the allegations levied against him recently, Mixon had intimidated a parking officer by inching up his car to him after he received a parking citation. And if you thought that was bad, he'd rip the citation into pieces and thrown them at the parking officer's face. So, to recoup, Schaefer claimed the police had acted rashly. While the truth is, Mixon's track record didn't help him out. But during a time when people demand more accountability, let's see what the Cincinnati Bengals had to say about the 2023 warrant. We're living in the 21st century, and one of the benefits of living in the modern world is that everything is examined under a microscope. This means that everything you do will be talked about. This might be a good thing, or a bad one. For Mixon, this might not be the most helpful thing thing right now after fans caused an uproar on Twitter, especially considering how Mixon had allegedly claimed the police couldn't touch him. The Bengals released a statement. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I think that's that's enough of that. Uh, thoughts, my brother. Uh, yeah, I Googled him. I, it says that he's actually from Cali. Cali, okay. Yeah, it says he's from Cali. Him. But, I mean, where he's from really don't make much of a difference. Doesn't. Um, all right. So, let's, let's go on to this. So, what he says, he put a gun in a woman's face and said the cops ain't going to do anything about it. My brother, you and the natty, and you're <laughs> black. Tell him about uh, the gun line, boss. Yeah. I don't know if that's really the case. I won't smoke with nobody. So, I mean, I, I don't know that, but yeah. Uh, also, um, the fact that they said that the case has, like, the cases or whatever have been dropped and all that, 
honestly may have something to do with Cincinnati's uh, record these past couple of years. Past couple of years? <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, shoot. Past few years, they ain't been that bad of a squad. Oh, you know oh, you mean as uh, part of the team? I thought you meant yeah, the team. City. No, I'm talking about the team's record. Okay, okay. I thought you meant the, the municipality team, no. and the, oh, and the, nah, and the policy nah. enforcers of that. Bruh, the I mean, they've been on the, as far as this city is concerned. They're part. If they've been on, if you've been on the first forty-eight, bro, come on. Just saying. I mean, what they got the neighborhood over the Rhine. I mean, bro, that's been on, one of the, one of the most notorious neighborhoods. Dude, when I travel back home, I call it the first forty-eight tour because I travel through every city that's been on the first forty-eight. Just about, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> With the exception of Columbus, every yeah. city that's been on the first forty-eight. Facts, you know what I'm saying? Man. Columbus uh, and Nashville, first forty-eight. Facts, bro. The only two that ain't been on the first forty-eight. I used to uh, refer to uh, no disrespect, y'all, to to those inhabitants and you know uh, favorite sons and daughters of uh, of the of the land known as Cincinnati. Uh, I used to call oh, it nah, much love to, to call it Kentucky Natty. It's right on the border, son. I mean, shoot, you cross the river, you're in Kentucky. That was one of the one of them places shoot. where the slave patrols could snatch you and bring you back or say that they're bringing you back, even if you had never been below that line and uh, take your, yourself into uh, servitude involuntarily. Right. So yeah, I don't, like I don't that. know. Uh, I don't know what part of the game he's playing, uh, but I tell you, it's a dangerous one for him. Uh, that part. I'm, like I said, it could be like the team's record been all right these past couple of years. So when the team is doing well, it generates revenue. And he is one of the main reasons that the team is doing well with, I want to say, over three th seasons, over a thousand yards rushing. OK, we'll see there. You have that, too. You know what I'm saying? When the team does well. And you get fans. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it, like I said, generates revenue. And if he's one of the main reasons that it's doing well, you don't want to stop it. So, however, it kind of overlooks some things. I'm just saying. However, putting guns in people's faces and yeah, you, 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 lugging you really women can't. in public is not a good way. To, to maintain that 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 uh but it brings it back to, it brings it back to that point where you were talking about the whole pedestal thing and yeah. then you want to punish them the harshest way but you put them on that pedestal and they're used to being on that pedestal so now it's like well you didn't put this complex on me and i'm going to enjoy the fruits of this complex so why are you right taking on. it away now you know what i'm saying man let, let's 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 uh follow the snowball down here <laughs> um this is not a laughing matter i apologize folks but we got to bring some levity to life because some of this stuff is uh so ridiculous you gotta laugh to keep from crying right so to speak you know that part yay wait a minute what did i do why is it not okay let me share the screen right why won't i Weird weirdness. Wait, did I not? Okay. Technical difficulties. No, I'm sharing the wrong thing. Let's remove that. 
I don't know what happened. A share feature. What is the dealio? It's not no. Oh, okay. I see. Sorry, I accidentally clicked on the different layout. I think that's what did it. Wait, no. Uh. Well, <laughs> I don't know what just happened. Give me a moment. So, but yeah, we have uh we got a lineup for you all to see. No pun intended. Um, definitely a, a lineup of uh, stories, situations that have been troublesome. Very much so. Very much so. Who's acting up? I don't know what is going on with this. What in the world? <clears throat> I apologize. The technical difficulty. That's crazy. Maybe I need to be uh, back in that that mode there. That be it. Uh, I don't get it. Okay. That is crazy. So my share feature, for some reason, all of a sudden, does not want to work. Very right. interesting. Madness, even. I'd say so. Uh, there we go. Let's try this. Go in and out of this. Okay. So, um, yeah, man, Joe Mixon is one of the top running backs in the entire league, not just for his team. Um, and a lot of these guys, they're like superstars. I mean, incredible, tremendous physical ability and skill sets. Mm -hmm. What would make a person with everything to gain – and and at the same time, a lot to lose. Just you know, say screw it and assault people, uh, brandish weapons, uh, threaten lives, and then act as if you know they are above any type of uh, reprimand, punishment, justice, <laughs> reciprocity. Head crack, head crack. <laughs> Too many hits in the head, my brother. Yeah, like we said, CTE. Yeah, but some of these guys, like we saw with Mixon, it's, uh-oh. Uh what just happened here? Be right back, folks. Yeah, I don't understand. There's something going on with my Dude, premium yard. Difficulties. It's the ancestors. But right yeah, on. It's uh, all kind of wildness with this uh, concussions, man. I mean, shoot. It's... <sighs> it's yeah. It's crazy. Well, let's take a look here, man. I 
I missed part of this, but I had caught some of it back when it occurred. But uh, we see who this is. This is one of the most talented wide receivers ever. Now, these allegations would be serious against anyone, but they take on added significance in light of Hill's history of domestic violence. Investigative reporter Angie Racono joins us now with a closer look at Hill's past. Angie? Well, Carolyn, Hill's record is now expunged. That's because he went through a court program that included anger management, counseling, and a batterer's program. Plus, he stayed out of trouble for years. But the original charges that he faced were troubling. Back in 2014, Hill was a college football player at Oklahoma State. He was arrested for beating his pregnant girlfriend. Hill hit her in the face, choked her, and punched her in the stomach. He also put her in a headlock. Crystal Espinal has posted about domestic violence and what she has been through on social media. Almost three years ago on December 12th, my life actually flashed before my eyes. To the victims, I hear you. I understand you. I feel you. If you are currently being hurt and abused, do not hold back. Stand up and take back your life. You have the power to do it. I believe in you. Hill and Espinal reunited. They are now engaged and have a three-year-old son. It's the child from when Espinal was pregnant and beaten in the stomach. Police reports don't clarify which juvenile is the focus of their investigation. One report lists Tyreek Hill by name. Both reports list the boy's mother, Hill's fiance. I don't I don't blame nobody but myself. Uh, it's, it's my fault and uh, it, uh, it's my mistake. Uh, can't nobody live my life with me, so I just got to deal with it. If the young man's trying to do the right things, whether it's with counseling, you know, wh whatever it is, he's trying to do the right things uh, to better himself. Those guys, those fans, they have every right to be mad at me. You know what? Because I did something wrong and I just let my emotions get the best of me and I shouldn't have did it. They have every right to be mad. But, but guess what? I'm going I'm to come back and be a better man, be a better citizen and everything and just take care of itself and let God do the rest. Tyreek Hill has not commented on this investigation. Espinal told me, quote, right now I am not making any comments on what's going on, and that's all I can say right now. Now, straight ahead at 6, our I-team takes a closer look at the legal aspects of child abuse investigations and what the guidelines are in Kansas. Angie Ricono. Bruh. Yo, not trying to be funny or nothing. First off, yeah, I mean, this is hopefully everything is all right with it. But again, not trying to be funny, but hearing him speak in that conference, it sounds like he's had some kind of uh, concussion damage. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It sounds like he's had a few too many hits to the head and has some concussion damage. There's definitely something in that telling us. I mean, and you know, shout out to the the doctor. Uh apologize, gosh. The doctor who uh they credit with discovering this condition that, that they refer to as CTE. Uh, man, uh, this is sad, man. Well, shoot, think about it. Uh, back in the day, uh, especially when uh, you had the NFL players that were unaliving themselves. R.I. Peter Jr. Sal. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them were, when they were using the uh, the pistols and all that stuff, they were aiming for the chest and leaving notes saying, study my brain. So, I mean, yeah, they knew it was something that was wrong. You know what I'm saying? So... Yes. Yeah. Shout out to the doctor who discovered or figured out the whole CTE, all that. For real. Bennett Omalu. Shout out, brother. Uh, but this Indeed. is crazy. 
This is crazy, man. That part. That part. And then, and then the 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 deafening silence. Even with the statements, there is a in the statements there is a, a sort of deafening silence from the league. Uh, Bruh, I mean, shoot, yeah, because they this this person is generating revenue for us. <sighs> yeah. Man. Bro, I mean, shoot. Real talk. Go back and watch 30 for 30 broke. Shout out to them because a lot of them players will speak on that for you. They'll tell you, um, like, playing with injuries and stuff, bad injuries. And they'll be like, oh, we'll just give them a shot or something and put them right back in the game. Yeah. Um, indeed, man. Uh, pain, real painkillers, and mm-hmm. what's and that's the, how they got hooked on that. That's how they got hooked on that stuff, cortisone, and, and all of that, you know. And I'm yeah. not condemning it because there's a therapeutic value and in, in a uh, important benefit to being able to soldier on temporarily when you're rendered uh, in, in a state of injury. Uh, incapable fully incapable so it we've seen it man we've seen it for years man uh we've seen the damage also from joe fraser to, to ali to uh wilfred wilfredo benitez um you know all type of contact sports man uh like you said say aaron hernandez oh some of the guys we're gonna we're gonna show right now. Uh, this this I'm showing you all this because I want you to understand this is not a racial thing. Sometimes people look at all these black guys in sports. And, well, l- l- let's see let's see about this one. It's with a lineman who's been arrested on domestic abuse charges. His girlfriend called 911 saying he was trying to kill her. And details of what she says happened are truly disturbing. An NFL player is accused of almost beating his girlfriend to death. And now we're hearing the terror she says she went through. What is it that's happening? The victim is whispering because she's hiding in a locked bathroom. Please help me now. Oh, oh. my arms just don't feel like her. Have them come in this room now. At one point, she texts 911 because she was too afraid to speak out loud. Please come in. He's trying to kill me, reads the text. Break down the door now. According to court documents, the fight broke out when her boyfriend, 27-year-old Chad Wheeler, allegedly asked her to bow down to him. When she refused, he strangled her with both hands until she passed out, leaving noticeable fingerprints on both sides of her neck. When she regained consciousness, Wheeler remarked, wow, you're alive? That's when she fled into the bathroom and locked the door, at which point cops say Wheeler picked the lock. On the 911 tape, you can hear the moment he breaks in. No. Questions that I'm asking. Oh, please. Wheeler is six foot seven and weighs 310 pounds. He played for the Seattle Seahawks, who were eliminated in this year's NFC wildcard game. Wheeler is blaming his actions on a manic episode, claiming he recently stopped taking his bipolar medication. It is time for me to get the help I need. I cannot express my sorrow or remorse enough. Bruh. Once again, you dedicate your life to something, you get to the point of success that you ultimately have been seeking after, chasing after, pursuing, uh, pushing towards, right? And then you can't even tell the truth about the reason for your fall from grace. Bipolar disorder? You know how many people I know been diagnosed with bipolar disorder ain't never tried to choke somebody or make somebody bow down to them or put somebody's face through a glass table because 
they didn't agree with them or their their behavior looked suspect in some manner because of their misconstrued uh, actions and their response not being what the person thought it should be. I just want to know why I asked for the bow down in the first place. Uh, well, you know what? There's no way to avoid that. I was going to say I, I was. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that ass, bro. I just want to know why I asked for that in the first place, son. I mean, now that sounds like the influence of some white powder. Or you can take the D out of that word powder. Because, and now another I walked, right, was, I walked right into that one. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. I, 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 I left the saying, door open. Bro, no, bro, listen. In another clip that you sent me, they interviewed her afterwards. Yes, yes, yes. And it said that uh, he sent her a picture. And I mean, she, she kind of walked into the whole situation. He sent her a picture of his head shaving. So, are you telling me that he went through a Remy? And I'm not talking about Remy Ma situation. I'm talking about higher talking learning. About higher learning. Brother? Yeah, I, bro, I don't know. But, but, but let's, I mean, let's just think about, let's just analyze the situation. Okay. So, she said he went to uh, LA to visit some of his family. It was a little bit uh, distraught or something. It was a tumultuous situation or what, or what may have you. Allegedly. Allegedly, sure. Now, she said that she sent him a picture of his head shaving, right? Mm -hmm. And she said it startled her because he ever always loved having long hair and would never want to shave his head. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. I can't grow hair, so I'm jealous of all you motherfuckers with long hair. Well, But I digress. Anywho, so you rock it well, my brother. You, you you're you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in good company, she said, also. She said that uh she rushed home to talk with him. Right. Okay. Now, again, he's six foot seven, and she said he is three hundred and eighteen pounds. Yes, sir. She said that she is 5'9 and 145 pounds. Not no little woman, but compared to him. Exactly. So she said that when she got home, uh, he was still like crying and stuff. And then I guess she said that he had like out of the blue asked her to bow down to him. Word. Okay, now mind you also, I believe they're in Seattle. Now, in this state of Washington, mm. in this region of the country. Tell them about the gun line, boss. Uh, yeah, there have been allegedly a group. Well, I think they do this like once a year or something like that. But supposedly, like the neo-Nazi population is very prevalent up there. Mm -hmm. And there's this one part of this state that they just all flock to like every year for something. So, I mean, yeah, allegedly. So, I'm saying that, again, you could possibly take the D out of the word powder. Allegedly. Well, I mean, obviously, he this was his black girlfriend since I want to say at least college. How do you miss that when you're that close? Unless it's some new development to you, brought on by some mysterious circumstances or change in circumstances and perception. You play in a 77 to 80 percent quote-unquote, so-called black league. And I always will say so-called usually before black. Because... You don't know shit. And also because 
we don't own the title black. It's a social status and it's actually a, a pejorative term that I wish our people would move away from using. I get the the powerful re reference to dark matter consciousness that a lot of our people intend when speaking such, but we know good and well these were statuses that were placed on both of us. He's not white. Uh, you and I are not black. See, that's why I always told people I was log cabin light complected, and they laughed at me. Ha ha, the joke's on you, Jack. Yeah, you were keeping it 100, uh, my copper complected friend. <laughs> But there's no no shade towards him uh, and no joke in that. Uh, people are indoctrinated with all kinds of nonsense. And if a person's suffered an injury to their brain, they would likely be more susceptible to uh, unsavory messaging, unhealthy thought processes. And she caught him, in, and I believe he was having a manic moment, but do I think that's all it was? No. There were some substances on top of brain injury, I, th I think, allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. And that's just my opinion. Um, added on he, to it. he was going through it, man. You know, and like, and like I said, I'm not trying to make this into like a, a racial thing or anything like that, but consider when 70 to 80%, the majority of, of this league, is physically by presence of, of athletes dominated by people of color. Correct. I mean, he's exceptional. Yeah. Let's, let's be real. This is an exceptional human being right here. That we're looking at that's done some fucked up shit. Yeah. And, and has the wrong influences uh, in his ear and probably feeling jaded and slighted. And who knows what amount of things he or any of the other guys of color and not of color have had to inject to get by, to grow faster, to be stronger, to have a mental edge. <laughs> but, bro, let's just hold up. I'm not let's just not excusing just, him. No, but I'm saying let's just go into this shit though, dude. Yeah, man. Like for real. Let's just think let's like the more I think about it, dude. Like, all right. So have the okay, when did all this happen? Was it a couple of years ago? Or was this yeah, like this recent? was some this was some years ago. Okay, so uh, is he still in the league? Let's find out. I am truly ashamed, he tweeted. Wheeler is expected to enter a plea on February 9th. That's when he's due in court for arraignment. Terror, she says she went through. <laughs> What is it that's happening? The victim is Two whispering because she's hiding in a locked bathroom. Please help me now. So let's see. So they, they cut all ties with him, but is he still in the plant brother squad, though? It's a good question. Hmm. Former American football. Offensive tackle. Went to USC. Okay. Um, well, that answers that. He's a former NFL offensive tackle. Yeah, I guess you got to be a running back or a quarterback to keep keep your player status active. And again, no, it ain't even a quarterback or running back. You got to generate revenue, like real revenue, get some yeah. fans in the stands type action. For that, but even still, bruh, I don't even think that's the case because shit, uh, they didn't do that shit for cat. Well, let's look at look at who they did do it for. That that you know, um, or Michael Vick. Dang, he went there. Where's um, the lie? I mean, there is no lie. 
I mean, but you know, America loves its dogs more than its humans. So, hey, if DMS can <laughs> forgive him, so can I. <laughs> exactly. Look, man. Uh, here's another guy, man. I always uh, in, admired and 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 uh, had tremendous respect for. Uh, but but let's let's look at his situation, and let's see if this is even CTE, or if this is. Um, some other foul play. I'll let the audience decide their own determination, but I definitely want you to weigh in on it. This is another Seattle, former Seattle player, uh, all pro, uh, lockdown corner, Richard Sherman, Stanford graduate. Uh, I'm better at life than you, Skip Bayless, quote unquote. You are mm -hmm. a Cretan, a Cretan, sir. Uh, when you refer to me, uh, refer to me now always as all pro <laughs> defensive back, <laughs> shut down corner, and Stanford graduate, uh, Richard Sherman. In this country, the record-breaking heat and the fires in the West, potentially record-breaking high temperatures again this weekend in some places, the fourth heat wave uh -oh, this in is five weeks. Not... Idaho and Montana are expected to break records. The heat fueling more than 60 wildfires, the flames from California's Dixie Fire, threatening power lines tonight. Flash flooding. FL star Como News in Seattle. Yeah. Pretty say he was trying to break down the door of the Northeast all the way to New England. We'll be watching it. In the meantime, we turn next tonight to that new video of NFL star Richard Sherman. Authorities say he was trying to break down the door of his in laws' home moments before his arrest. Late today, Sherman in court on multiple charges, and tonight his new statement just in. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth with the video obtained by Como News in Seattle. Yeah. Former Super Bowl champion Richard Sherman appearing in court today, holding hands with his wife. Manor, please of not guilty to all of the charges. Pleading not guilty to five misdemeanor charges after an early morning altercation at his in-laws Seattle area home earlier this week. This surveillance video obtained by Como News appearing to show Sherman allegedly trying to break into his in-laws home. Prosecutors say his father-in-law was so afraid he had a handgun at the ready and sprayed Sherman with bear mace. Earlier that night, Sherman's wife calling 911, telling dispatchers her husband was drunk and belligerent and was threatening to kill himself. I need officers to my house now. According to law enforcement, Sherman drove away, crashing his car before ending up at his in-law's door. The charges against the 33-year-old free... Threatening to kill himself. Drunk and belligerent, threatening to kill himself, but about to break down that door in Seattle. In Seattle, at his in law's house, meaning his wife got away from him to go to her parents' house instead of just calling on the phone or even knocking on the door and asking to talk to her dad. Because we already know what this situation is. And for those of you who right. don't, for those of you she who don't, the last up, piece of chicken. Or drank, the, or drank the last of the pitcher of Kool Aid. But either way, I'm just saying, I mean, and we can tell these jokes because, you know, we so called black. No, but anyhow, <laughs> but we know what this scenario is i mean anybody's ever been in a long-term relationship where you cohabitate with someone uh or you're married or the same you know some people view that as the same thing um sometimes you don't see eye to eye and sometimes one or the other goes back where their roots are to reground and regroup who they are right sometimes the other if they want to really talk to them, they have to go there, but not drunk and belligerent after wrecking their vehicle their and vehicle. probably getting a hold of them on the phone and saying they're going to kill themselves. Yeah, if you're about to take yourself out, no, I don't want to just hang up on you and let you do it, but I also don't want you necessarily to come where I am in case, well, I'm going to go ahead and skip from this story to another one to show you what I'm really saying because uh, where is that um, 
sometimes uh it could turn into this. One of the victims is advising that there is a woman and kids inside the house. So we've got forced entry into the residence, possibly victims inside. A suburban southern town engulfed by a grisly crime. This was wild. We've got four down, four down inside the house. Yeah, who would have ever fathom this? Known as a pillar in his community, shot dead. Robert is a, a physician, but with his medical practice of as many years as he's had it, he looked at it as a ministry. He looked at it as a way he could reach out and help people. His wife shot and killed too, and their two grandchildren and a contractor who happened to be working on the home, plus one other injured. And the former NFL football player who police say shot them all, and then himself, leaving many wondering why. We have no indication right now that there was a doctor-patient relationship between Dr. Leslie and Philip Adams. If you think about who he killed, the doctor, his wife, and two relatively young grandchildren, I mean, this is a guy who just doesn't care who he kills. As the country grapples with its 133rd mass shooting just this year, with another occurring just today in Bryan, Texas, a reported workplace shooting that left one dead and four critically injured, it's a sobering reality and the president has vowed to take action. This is an epidemic for God's sake, and it has to stop. Rock Hill, South Carolina, a quiet town of just over 75,000. Dr. Robert Leslie is a well-known and well-respected physician here, running two emergency medical clinics. They took you as you are. They loved you as you came to them. They loved everyone that they met. It's a sunny Wednesday afternoon. Dr. Leslie, his wife Barbara, and two of their grandchildren, Ada and Noah, are all home. HVAC technicians James Lewis and Robert Shook are outside working. 911. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think we've had some trouble at 4456 Marshall Road. What's going on on Marshall Road? I think there's been a bad shooting. A concerned neighbor out cutting grass hears shots and sees someone in the distance. The guy walked out of the house. I'm quite sure I've seen him from a distance. It looked like a black guy. By 4.45 p.m., sheriff's deputies are called to the Leslie's home. First deputies arrived on the scene eight minutes after that, uh, those two 911 calls. Then we immediately began to assemble a team to clear the house of Dr. Robert Leslie. Dr. Leslie, his wife Barbara, and their two grandchildren are all found dead on the scene, as well as the HVAC contractor, James Lewis, his colleague, Robert Shook, is critically injured. Once we cleared the home, we, uh, we found Dr. Robert Leslie, and his wife, Barbara, and their two grandchildren in a room in the back of the house, uh, all deceased with gunshot wounds. Did he find them in that room, or did he make his way into the house and force them all into a room at gunpoint? Perhaps we'll see. Neighbors nearby are evacuated as a search for a suspect begins. Once the investigation began, uh, we were able to develop uh, Philip Adams as a suspect. 32-year-old former NFL player Philip Adams, whose parents live just minutes away from the Leslies, becomes the center of the investigation. Adams holds up in his family home, and a tense, hours-long standoff between Adams and law enforcement ensues, where investigators try to negotiate his surrender. And so for a period of, it sounds like, hours, they try to communicate with somebody that didn't respond. So at some point, they decide to send a robot into the house to do an analysis. Bro, this don't even sound right, bro. The way this dude is describing it, it don't sound right at all. Because he, to me, he is depicting this dude as just some maniac psychopath who just went in there and forced these people into this into a room and shot them all. Yeah, there's something no more apparent to reason. There's there something has more to, to be. But um, I think as the story went on, I want to say that they said something about the doctor being the dude, the shooter's father's doctor, or something like that. But there definitely was yeah. not, there definitely is more to it. Yeah. But if there, but see now, see if they're saying that the 
the doctor was the shooter's father's doctor, then it already proved that dude who was describing the whole story to be a liar because he just flat out said that, well, well there was no uh, doctor, there was no uh, type of connection with them dudes. Apparently, if the dude was your father's doctor, then there was some kind of connection. There was definitely a doctor-patient relationship. So that dude right there is already sounding stupid. Shut up. Yeah, as uh, they used to call it when I worked for the corrections department, there was definitely a nexus. Nexus is a, a close uh, association or connection, either familiarly, familiarly or uh, through some other type of um, direct uh, interaction um, an explanation of of, connect, of, of of relationship some somewhere and like you said if that's the doctor of his father and who knows what his anger right doesn't justify taking another person's life but or people's lives especially the, the grandchildren that part, that, that, that's the part that, that, yeah, that, but that's the part that speaks of of the perception something of damage sick. beyond repair. Yeah, something is not right. And that's personal. It's personal. Uh, but nonetheless, still, we we don't know. Like you, you got a person that's possibly, like I said, uh, in so many words, not exact words, but. They've given their whole life to this thing. They reach a certain point. They think they're going to be able to, and maybe in his instance, maybe, because I don't know the, I don't know the family and I don't know anything personally about this, but maybe he felt there was something he could do for his dad medically if he reached a certain financial apex and then yeah. have to retire early, maybe because of injury or maybe he had some other investments and just was done with football, but then found out he didn't have enough or he was not being told the truth about what could be done, if anything, nah, about his bro, father's I condition. Think, I lightweight like think the brother got hustled. Did you see that house, bro? Yeah, man. I lightweight like think that brother may have, like, legit possibly got hustled or something by this doctor mm. by saying that he could help his dad out in some kind of way. That's, that's what I was, yeah, that's what yeah, I was. And, and, and the doctor was like, well, uh, I tried and it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. And he just kept giving them money and money and money and it just whatever it's what was it going on like. just didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it sounds like to me too. Allegedly. And allegedly. No proof. Like I said, no connectivity, no nexus on my part. But uh yeah, I mean, we got a couple more to, to go through. Uh shoot, here's a real a uh, recent one. Yeah, this one is a saddening one as well. They're all sad, but this one. Uh, okay, something I didn't do right. Let me go back here. Come back to the stream yard. Yo, that's madness, dude. But it good. And I want to know, I wonder like what the connection with this is, if they have the, not what the connection is, but if there's the same connection in boxing with this, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, some cats breaking down in, into tears and at random and dressing like uh, a, a, a different gender and but not really having any particular sexual connectivity to that action, uh, according to themselves, allegedly. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the history of, of drunken driving, wrecking vehicles, driving except at excessive speeds, you know, reckless behaviors, both set of set of a sexual nature and, uh, others. Uh, I mean, there's definitely something. I think that has a connection. Definitely a connection, I believe, with that. Um, 
Word. So let me see if I can get the Dalvin Cook, Dalvin Cook story up. Uh, why is it doing that again? <laughs> Bear with me. Bear with me, and you'll see. Like, share, and subscribe, y'all. Like, share, and subscribe. We're going to get it together. Give me one second. Let me try this. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. This has never happened before, and I hope it doesn't ever happen again. Let's see what happened. That's weird. I don't think y'all can hear that, right? Nah. That is some blogna. <laughs> Yo. Terrible. 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 So, I am trying to troubleshoot this uh, while we're live, man. So, apparently, Dalvin Cook beat up his ex girlfriend who came to his apartment allegedly to break up with him and gather her belongings when things went awry. But he says that she showed up and held him and uh, at least one friend at gunpoint. Um, if that was the case and she did that, why did she not come with the police escorts? Uh, apparently she's a sergeant in the army so i i don't know what difference that would make because i mean you're dealing with civilian issues but yeah. um nonetheless uh things went violent excessively mm -hmm. violent i think i got it now it's Okay, there's Richard Sherman. There's a uh, Dalvin Cook. Guys, I was on my way to drop a video on the Dalvin Cook news where it was reported from ESPN's Adam Schefter that the Vikings running back was the victim of domestic abuse and extortion. And as I was almost done finishing the video, a new report popped up giving an update. So the said female in the story, a now ex-girlfriend of Dalvin, is actually filing a lawsuit allegedly claiming that Cook physically abused her, causing a concussion, and holding her hostage in his home. Oh, by the way, she also has some receipts to back up her claim. Run it back. Whoever did this is stupid for that. <laughs> yeah. Before we begin, guys, I'm doing a PS5 giveaway, and all you need to do to enter is be subscribed to the channel with all notifications turned on. So I don't know. Fair use. Is, Once again, we don't the own the rights to this. It's been nonstop, and this latest one came in as a shocker as it was first reported from Adam Schefter that Delvin's ex-girlfriend had abused him physically and extorted him. 
which isn't something you hear every day. Usually it's the other way around, as in the cases where the male is the victim, it often goes unreported. So the first reports came in as such that Delvin Cook's ex-girlfriend, Gracelyn Trimble, who's a sergeant in the U.S. Army, entered the running back's home with an illegal garage opener and physically assaulted Delvin with mace and punched them repeatedly. Things escalated when Trimble held Delvin along with his two friends at gunpoint. Now, these are some serious allegations from Cook's attorney. However, not even an hour later, a new report came alleging that Gracelyn Trimble was actually now filing a lawsuit as she says it was a running back who assaulted her. According to her account, Trimble flew to Minnesota around November of last year to break up with Cook and get her belongings. She claimed that Dalvin got angry when she asked for his help to gather her belongings, and that's when he grabbed her arm and slung her whole body over the couch, slamming her face into the coffee table and causing her lower forehead and the bridge of her nose to bust open. Basically, it became a he said, she said situation until Gracelyn Trimble attached the following Instagram conversation in her lawsuit against Cook, and what you're about to see is pretty damning. Basically, it's a back and forth conversation between the two parties, and it seems like Delvin is contrite for his actions and is willing to accept the consequences as he offers to go to the police. When you look at the picture, it looks pretty bad. You can see a huge gash on her nose, and this had to be a pretty traumatic situation for the young lady. And she responded back to Delvin, saying that her face was so messed up that she couldn't even see her family for Thanksgiving. That being said, the two parties did try and work out a settlement, but never came to an agreement, and this is where we are now. Both sides pointing the finger at each other. Police were never contacted at the time of the incident, and no criminal charges were ever filed. Anyways, as soon as there's an update, I'll be sure to keep you in the loop. Very peculiar. No criminal charges ever filed. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many different things that could be said. There's so many routes we could go with this, even on the conspiracy theory tip. Um, unusual things. Uh, I'm going to play one more real quick. Um, I think it would be a good one to add as well. Also, this is not a so-called player of color. Now to that GMA exclusive former New York Giant player, Josh Brown, sharing his side of the story for the first time about the domestic abuse allegations he says could end his career. ABC's Paula Ferris sat down with him. Good morning, Paula. Good morning to you, Robin. Josh Brown is breaking his silence because he wants people to understand the entirety of his story. He admits he was a failed husband, but he also says that his journey of rehabilitation and healing began long before the Giants cut him last fall. And this morning, Josh Brown is asking for another chance. All right, here's Josh Brown. Josh Brown was at the pinnacle of his professional career, starting kicker for the NFL's New York Giants. Josh Brown. Finish. He had just signed a $4 million contract, but then it all came crashing down for the 14-year veteran. 911, what are you reporting? Um, my husband is really upset right now. The world now thinks that I beat my wife, and I have never hit this woman. I never hit her. Not once. Brown was arrested in May of 2015 and booked for assault against his wife, Molly. I reach for the phone. I grab the top of the phone. She screams. I back away. She leaves. 35 minutes later, I'm in handcuffs. The deputy says, quote, husband grabbed wife's wrist during an argument, causing her pain, bruising and a small abrasion. Husband was arrested and booked for assault. And he said, quote, I believe that Josh assaulted Molly. That's what he said. Do you feel you assaulted her? No, I did not. I did not touch her on the wrist. Brown was not charged in the incident, but the King County Sheriff's Office in Washington State began an investigation into allegations of abuse by Brown of his wife, Molly. And in October of 2016, they released more than 100 pages of documents detailing allegations and seeming admissions of physical, verbal, and emotional abuse. She claims you were physically violent on more than 20 occasions. I dispute it. I absolutely dispute it. Included in those documents, highly confidential journals filled with personal details. He says he was instructed to write them as part of his marriage therapy at the time. These were your deepest, darkest thoughts and secrets yeah. made public. These were the things that you say to yourself and then you burn them. And, and I didn't. 
He says Molly turned those journals over to sheriff's investigators in 2016, years after they were written, as part of an investigation. And just days after the journals were made public by the sheriff's office, he was cut from the giant, and he's been out of a job since. What did the league know and when? The league has just take a moment, known everything. Give a you're saying that you're completely honest with the league. Are you angry at how they've handled everything? <coughs> the fact that my private things are being used against me, that's hard to swallow. You're talking about your journals. I'm talking about my journals. I had to learn all that and write that down in order to heal. And now you're telling me that I'm going to be punished for trying to correct the things in my life that needed to be changed. Brown's own words, things he never thought would be public, had come back to haunt him. You said, quote, I have physically, verbally, and emotionally abused my wife, Molly. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I mean, I had put my hands on her. I kicked the chair. I held her down. Like, th the holding down was the worst moment in our marriage. I never hit her, never slapped her, I never choked her, I never did those types of things. When you say that you physically abused her, but you mm -hmm. didn't hit her, how are people supposed to reconcile that, Josh? Uh, it's, they're not supposed to. What I did was wrong, period. Domestic violence is not just physical abuse. We're talking intimidation and threats, the attempt to control body language. An abuser is going to abuse to a certain degree to acquire some kind of reaction. And you take responsibility for everything you did and said during your marriage? I'm fully accountable to every bit of it. Make no excuses. None. He says he'd been actively rehabilitating himself years before that 2015 arrest. You know, I spoke publicly about this at men's groups, uh, at churches. This was, this was not something that I necessarily hid. What have you lost? Everything. His divorce finalized in December, his career possibly over, and his reputation shattered. And somebody walks away with a new bag and somebody else walks away holding the guilt bag. Bruh. And the league. Anyhow, well, you know. One thing that we can take away from this, if you live in Seattle, do not bring your bra with you. Allegedly. Allegedly. Because that took place in where else? King County. Hmm. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. I didn't even get back to the Ray Rice thing. But we listen, we can always do another another episode with this topic. Bro, uh, I mean, you got to think about it. People going to mess up constantly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. If you play a contact sport of any sort or a combat sport, man, keep mental health on tap. Key, key advocates in your corners, uh, not just friends, not just uh, kicking it partners. Make sure you uh, do your best and darndest to keep people around you that actually care about you. And just in uh, case we did not say this before, we definitely do not condone any of the actions of that, that were involved in any of these segments. Any of that. At all. And it ain't cool one bit. And if you're a partner of a person involved in contact sports, keep a close eye on different changes in their in their uh, personality, uh, their forms of speech, their aggravation levels. And I'm not saying this to live in so that you should live in fear, but so that maybe you could intervene with help prior to anything right. horrific happening in front of to you to your children or in front of your children or, or loved ones. Word. Um, just keep in mind that some of these individuals have been placated their entire existence because of 
abilities that they have and they they may or may not have and this no pun intended allowed it to go to their head that part yeah, it's been watch, another oh go ahead watch out watch out for that ike turn on turn off switch there you go that's the thing they they have an on switch a lot of them don't have an off switch and as i'm just saying it's their problem to deal with but it's not always their fault nonetheless we don't condone any of the actions that allegedly took place to cause harm injury damage or criminal offenses committed um by individuals um but we hope we brought some awareness and, and we brought some interesting points up like share subscribe comment cash out uh whatever you're going to do to support we want to continue to bring you great content and interesting topics of discussion as we have our deeper dive dialogue um you know help us brothers out check us out on rumble shout out the swivel room check out the swivel room platform we're all on swivel room 3 pmd deeper dives yeah. dialogues unlimited 30 30 30 uh random ish random ish you yeah. know we got more coming too yeah stay we tuned nft marketplace we got shop a shop we got nfts we got all that so just we come in merch, and support and get involved stuff. become a part of the shwebo room movement all right the movement the experience indeed all of it immerse so, yourself indeed yes <laughs> until next time y'all